welcome in, welcome in, welcome in. So in this video, I'm going to bring to you guys, hold up, let me adjust my mic so y'all can hear me. All right, mic check, mic check, mic check. I think we're good. All right, so in this video, I'm going to bring to you guys uh, the concept of liquidity. Why is it very important? You know, this is what drives the markets. Available liquidity is not just the dollars on the M2 balance sheet for Central Exchange. It's going to be credit utilization, monetary liquidity, um, bank reserves, a lot of different things kind of fall under this umbrella. So with this video, I want to go ahead and introduce this topic to you. We're going to be going over some introductory terms, uh, some intermediate terms as well, just to give us a good idea of where do we fare currently in the liquidity cycle credit growth and other things of this nature okay so let's jump in total central bank liquidity as of today and this is to the t is about 24.78 trillion dollars now compared to the previous year if y'all can kind of see here we are down just about eight percent so you know once again taking the basis of you know just a year ago we were a little bit higher at about 27 trillion dollars so it's not going to surprise anybody that we're not, you know, just creating a whole bunch of new money currently or money is just not very much in the, its velocity. It's not at its highest velocity of, of what it has been in previous times. So this is uh, somewhat of a slowdown, but it's nice because there's been a lot of things within markets that have been steady, thus creating positive returns year to date or even over the past year, which is, you know, a lot of the coins that we have, they've returned know uh, a positive return for us they haven't been negative but it's not that like jet you know fuel to like keep us going up and skyrocketing right so what we need for that to happen is we need an increase year over year and even on like a quarterly basis of central bank liquidity in the entire globe if we move over here we can take a look at the six month basis so we're down about seven percent over the last six months and even in the last uh, three months, the last quarter, we're down about 3%. In the last month, especially, you know, we're still down about 1%. And this is globally. So one thing that we can look at is now monetary liquidity. Now, this is going to be a little bit broader than just the central banks. If we look even on that, we've been pretty flat over the last year. Let's take a look at the three month. The three month, once again, pretty flat. Six month, pretty flat. So what are we looking for like how do we know that we're getting a big push in asset asset prices due to a liquidity push or expansion how do we know is when we start to look at the shorter term time frames and we start seeing positivity so on the monthly time frame for example there's a higher number for uh, the monetary liquidity and then let's say three or four months go past then we see this number go positive you start seeing the shorter or the the faster readings so like the monthly and the three month in this case starting to show us positivity in the percentage gains now one thing that has expanded over the past year has been credit expansion it's been about five percent increase over the last year that's actually very positive reason being is because a lot of things nowadays are done on credit and credit is just another word for, hey, I'm going to give you this money for an interest rate. You can use it for whatever it is that you want. So credit availability is, is a topic of conversation here. And so this is just the overall overview. Now, let's actually get a little bit more in detail into this liquidity cycle. So I love this uh, information. Now, this is some pr proprietary information, y'all. Y'all are only going to be able to get this here on um, in the vault. So definitely utilize this to your advantage because most people don't know how to really um, assess liquidity globally and we get a chance to do that here now typically moving forward i'm going to be making these videos only for the top tier so you've got to be an executive um, in the voc votes of crypto in order to get these videos but what i'm actually going to do for the first time i'm going to share this with everybody so even if you're on the lowest tier, you'll get access to this video in particular, just to give you a little taste about what we're going to be doing uh, moving forward. So let's look at the liquidity cycle. So the liquidity cycle, let's get an idea of some definitions um, and, and we can do that here. So liquidity cycle, the M2 liquidity cycle chart provides a comprehensive view of the global liquidity trend by tracking the monetary supply, specifically narrow and broad. OK, so we're looking at narrow money and broad money. Now we're going to look at this over a couple different basis, right? So we're going to look at three different time frames in particular. We're going to look at the one year cycle, 
can be uh, basically considered a noise filtering signal that helps it in an analysis analyzing the long-term global liquidity and that's what we really really are in it for the long term but to get a little bit more detail in there we can look at the six month cycle and then we can look at the three month cycle to give us a little bit more short-term and mid-term indications of what's going on in the liquidity cycle now there's things that we can also do attached with this cycle we're going to be able to get readings for bitcoin the s&p 500 and gold see if there's any correlation between assets or any change in liquidity in the system the correlation suggests that the assets reprice in response to these liquidity shifts. Additionally, it is important to note that this measurement of liquidity is also sensitive to changes in credit. And that's why you know, we need to talk about credit spreads. And that's going to be a little bit more advanced. We'll talk about that later. But then also available credit, which we did see a, a small uptick of 5% over the last year. Now, this is pretty cool. So let's make it make sense. Let's look at the long-term liquidity cycle first. Okay. And so you're going to see a couple trends. We're going to take everything else off the chart. Now, long term, and we can go back to all of 2015. We have periods of time where we're pushing up in liquidity. So, you know, going above the midline and we're looking at on the Y axis, we're looking at the percentage change and we're looking at the, the yearly basis. We're looking at, OK, from October a fifth of 2015 compared to the previous year, there wasn't big of a difference in global liquidity. But you see that expansion therefore come in Q1 and Q2 of 2016. And so if you notice, you know, Bitcoin's doing pretty well during this time. It's pushing. It's doing well. It, it cools off 2017 just for a little bit. And then it really rallies all the way until like the beginning of 2018. Topples over in Q1 and then comes down we have a, a big drain of liquidity so you know a, a net effect of because we're looking at the movement here so we go from 13 percent down to zero percent liquidity increase basically saying okay there's no more forced injection of money into the system it may stagnate and that's what we're looking for on a year upon year basis it stagnates and then we come around back here in 2019 and it gets going again softly and then we have a big huge push everybody you know remembers this this was you know after covid and once again we have a huge major catalyst of saying hey we're they're injecting 20 percent new liquidity on a year upon year basis globally not just in the united states and then so we know crypto is a global asset class yes the united states may may lead a lot of things with the interest rates or just sentiment but across the board money comes from everywhere all the nooks and crannies to be able to put um, market capitalization to the assets that we are holding so we have a big drain of liquidity now the thing is to notice this if you ever have a period of time where year over year that we fall negative these are opportunities to buy 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 it's very rare if you notice on a year upon year basis we're looking at an aggregate time frame of just about nine years and it it, it if you if you look at this it spends about like 90 percent of the time in positive liquidity range so you know either a small trickle of liquidity or a large expansion like how we're talking about it's rare that we find any negative readings on here so one thing i want you guys to remember as we look at this liquidity chart through the months and the years that you guys are here in the patreon Anytime that we go negative on this, this is opportunities to take a look at the market and say, hey, what's going on, especially after a big expansion. OK, so there's a caveat, especially after a big expansion. We want to look back to uh, this mean re uh, regression right here and anything that is a, a, a local reading that is lower than the midline. So as of right now, on a yearly basis and, and really like all of like 2023 and 2024, there's been no large impulse of liquidity. Like we have a couple of Johns here, 2 percent in uh you know may of 2023 you know this was the one that we actually all felt right that uh, october push for the altcoins where we we're like okay altcoins are you know not really doing too much and they jolted up someone went up 8x 10x that was off of this liquidity push of only just about four percent so imagine what it looks like when we get something like this where we get an eight percent liquidity push or even a 14 percent liquidity push or god have you if we even get a 20 percent liquidity push year upon year that would be very nice so that's the the yearly basis now let's look and bring up the the six month and then also the three month and then so what we can see is the six month is trending down we have a little bit more noise with the three month 
So I really like the beginning of the year. Uh, and, and this is excluding like the ETFs and because there's other things that kind of keep Bitcoin and crypto up versus what the rest of the market may be doing. So, for example, you know, Bitcoin is hitting all time highs in we're talking March and April of 2024. But yes, if you notice, this is the time when liquidity starts to slowly drain and go below the midline from that point on. And so we're still actually negative. So once again, even on the three month and the six month, we spend less time in the negative territory than we do in the positive territory. So what does this tell us? If we're negative on the three month and the six month in this liquidity measure, that lets us know these are the more advantageous times to DCA and to coins. Um, and we're not looking at no charts from TA or no sentiment online. We're looking at just overall liquidity. So this is extremely helpful. Now, one thing that I will tell you is that markets don't always track liquidity one for one. Let's look at Bitcoin over the, the, the lineage of time. For example, yes, when we have a liquidity input here in Orange's Bitcoin, you find that Bitcoin tracks and follows therefore after. And it's more expansive than, you know, maybe the percentage gains for liquidity. For example, the market capitalization for Bitcoin, while liquidity maybe goes up 4% on the six month, Bitcoin market capitalization 5x is during that same duration. So, you know, there's a, a beta that Bitcoin has that's always going to produce a little bit higher um, exponential returns in the sense of liquidity. You only need a small percentage of liquidity increase to get a big uh, percent of market cap increase for Bitcoin solely because the market cap is small enough to do that. And the altcoins are going to give us even more expansion off of these small liquidity movements. And as you can see, right, this liquidity push back here in you know 2020 going into 2021 led to the bull run for 2021. And so now as we come and we're coming off the bear market lows, right? So, you know, this is Bitcoin getting to these lows, right? And then market capitalization, you know, got really hurt uh, back here in late 2022 going into 2023 now. And we've trended up. So as liquidity came back. Bitcoin trended up to a certain extent as liquidity came through, came back down. Bitcoin chilled out as liquidity came back. Bitcoin follows as liquidity uh, drains down. Bitcoin follows. So Bitcoin is going to lag uh, this liquidity measure. You know, it's looking to be about like 30 to 60 days just in different timing. And so this is a nice thing to see, because when I'm going to get very excited is when we start to see this three month and the six month liquidity measure start to go back above the midline and start to expand above the midline in positive percentile. That means Bitcoin is going to be coming thereafter. So very, very important for us to know. One little deviation to kind of keep note of, right, is the S&P 500. So the S&P 500 has kind of deviated where like how, you know, we, we had this liquidity drain and then, you know, S&P 500 kind of topples over. The deviation is kind of, you know, where we, we stand here, where the S&P 500 uh, continues to like go up just a little bit more than everything else. While, you know, Bitcoin is draining during this time, the S&P 500 is holding a lot better. So just in general, SP 500, uh, 500 is going to hold better in liquidity drains. But once again, it's not going to give you the exponential uh, returns when liquidity is increasing and ex expanding. So something to think about. Um, I'm glad that I can share this with you guys because this is very important. Now, credit growth. Credit growth is something that we can monitor and look at as well. And so we could look at different changes over you know, certain periods of time. So really, one the one that I'm, I'm most interested in is the yearly credit growth. So the yearly credit growth is positive. Like So this is what we felt, once again, um, from October of 2023. And let's take off the SP 500. So from October of 2023, why things happen a certain way? Because credit expanded. And then so it expanded from October of 2023, right? And, and, and really did a, a good justice for us. And that's what helped us get a nice catalyst going into 2024 um, with new money credit growth. And we're talking to the, the tune of $5.4 trillion, where it was negative um, just a few months prior. So things that are very, very, very important um, to think about. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to track along with this liquidity measure here and, and see how this is going to continue to affect the markets. Uh, let me try to let me see central bank asset cycles. We'll look at this and, and I'll leave it here um, to get into another video after this. So last thing, the credit bank uh, assets. So central banks, excuse me, central bank assets. 
they all have assets and um, they decide to either run off the balance sheet or increase the balance sheet. Let's see if we can get this to pop up. So uh, I think this might be giving us a little issue. There we go. All right. So once again, we can look on this on this six month, the three month and the one month change. Um, one thing that we can see is we are in a regime since, you know, really, you know, Q1 of 2022, we're primarily they are running off their balance sheet. There's been time periods where they say, hey, we're going to expand. But I would say since that point, 85 percent of the time we have been uh, going down on the assets for all the central banks across the board. And as of right now. You know, on the sixth month, you know, you see, yeah, we're, we're down a couple trillion bucks. So, yes, that's like Bitcoin and crypto is so sensitive to liquidity. This is why we're not at 100,000 yet or, or 200,000 yet. But here's the thing. Nothing stays the same forever. Just like how we have fluctuations where we're above it, then we're below it. Then we're above it, then we're below it. So y'all can get the pattern. We just are coming from a long period of time where we're below the midline on central banks adding assets to their, their balance sheet. This is a cycle. There's always change. So the reason why the extended time is is because we had a extended time where they're adding plenty of liquidity. And especially, you know, at this point in time here and, you know, during uh, you know, the the late stage of COVID or going into 2021. And so markets will follow this. And so what I'm happy about is even in times of, you know, just even small expansion where it's not, you know, maybe, you know, tens of trillions or or even like six to eight trillion dollars being you know injected onto their balance sheets at once over a span of six months even if it's an aspect of saying hey we can only get like a, a trillion dollars at a time or maybe you know a couple hundred billion dollars but nonetheless it, it's positive and it stays positive for six eight months this is all crypto markets need to go and do numbers so that's what we're looking for so we're looking for a cross of the midline on this measure here on central bank asset liquidity so i hope this video helps you guys i hope the value is continuing to be created in your understanding the more that you guys know the more savvy that you guys can be so we're in an opportunity to say hey like we can really get some good dcas in before these liquidity measures change and and once again don't take time for granted go out there work extremely hard if you can save up that money get some dispensable income increase your cash flows from your business or whatever you're doing if you're working somewhere maybe don't go out to eat so much right um there's going to be a blessing for those that stick with it and are good stewards of the capital that they get and put the capital in the right places we know crypto is one of the best places to get the gains but we can get them from a, a risk adjusted standpoint to where we're not being gamblers here we're not, we're not just investing into all this craziness this crap um if you want to do that that that's cool but i'm really uh, here to help you guys steward the asset of just building your net worth in a good solid portfolio so i appreciate y'all for coming through for this video i'm going to post this for everybody to watch and and once again if you guys want more of this content make sure that you guys are a part of the executive tier in the bolts of crypto all right i'll catch y'all in the next one peace